Nobody tagged me. I'm just jumping in because, you know, I can. And I would not have predicted this, although I should have. Maybe we do the book that didn't make me cry. I'm a, I'm a weeper. I, I get emotionally invested in books and I'm not sad about it. Time for the dead battery and the change in angle. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today's video is going to be the mid-year freakout tag. And I know it's been all over booktube and there's good reason for it, but I do really enjoy this tag. And I have been really, really bad about tracking my books. Like my Goodreads is not totally up to date. I've been trying to work on it. My physical reading log that typically I would obsessively track is not totally up to date. So I literally pulled all the books off my shelf and I'm sitting around them. And then I've got my list of audiobooks I listened to and ebooks that I got from the library. And it took me a little while to kind of pull it all together. But this is the perfect way for me to give myself a check in, a little bit of a reality check, and to kind of get myself organized for the next six months of the year, she says optimistically. But I love this tag. So without further ado, let's jump on in. So the first question is, what is your favorite book that you've read so far? And I have a really hard time narrowing this down because there's so many books that I just loved and for so many different reasons, but I got it down to three in no particular order, but I absolutely loved Finley Donovan is Killing It. I was so looking forward to this book. It totally sounded like something I would love and I did. It was just, it was funny and it was a good mystery and I just love the friendship between the two women and I cannot wait for the sequel to come out. And again, like when I think of like favorite books, it's like books I wanna read again or books that just moved me in some kind of a way. <sighs> you guys, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I can't stop talking about it. This book was so beautifully written, was so beautifully constructed. Addie and Henry and Luke, I just loved it. I just, I'm obsessed. I, I think part of it is the journey V.E. Schwab went on taking her 10 years to write this and listening to her talk about her love of the book. And I feel like you can see it in every word of it. I loved this book so much, so, so much, all the things. And then, I have a reread that I just am absolutely obsessed with. I just finished it the other day and I reread Final Girls by Riley Sager for the first time since I originally read it back in 2018. And I honestly didn't think I could love this book more than I did the first time. And I just loved it. It's so well done. Quincy is such a great character. This turned me on to Riley Sager. I've never looked back and reading it again, I feel like I have like the same appreciation for it, but maybe even a little bit more. And I just loved it. I just absolutely loved it. So it's a reread, but it is still by far, I mean, more than five stars if that's possible, but one of my favorites. I'm so glad I reread it. So question number two is the best sequel that you've read. And I haven't read a single sequel this year. So I used to be like a huge series person and I'm not opposed to them, but I seem to be migrating more towards standalones or same author, multiple books. So yeah, got nothing for the sequel question. Next question is a new release that you are excited to read, but haven't read yet. And you know me, I couldn't just narrow it down to one. So first up is the book that I'm reading right now which is Bathhouse by PJ Vernon. Sorry, you're getting the naked cover. I just started this yesterday. I am, survey says, like 40 pages in, I'm obsessed. So this is about Nathan and Oliver. Oliver kind of gets himself into some big trouble on page one and it's just, I'm sucked in. And as soon as we're done here, I'm going back to this. Next up is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. So I read Red, White, and Royal Blue last year and I absolutely loved it. So I love Casey McQuiston's writing and storytelling and characters. I had seen a lot of people who had an arc of this book raving about it. So I'm really excited about this. This is about a woman named August. She moves to New York City and she basically falls in love with a girl she sees on the subway. And I feel like anyone who's ever commuted ever 
or like if you're in one of those like stadium style college classes, like you just get crushes on people. <laughs> I definitely have had commuter train crushes. And it turns out the girl she has a crush on doesn't just look 70s cool, like she's from the 70s and there's some sort of time warp something magical happening here. So don't quite know the details, super excited for it. Another one that is right up my alley is The Girls Are Also Nice Here by Lori Elizabeth Flynn. So this is a dual timeline. These are, I think it's kind of like a mean girls, but like super duper dark. They went to a boarding school together. I think it's boarding school, not college. It's college and they come to the reunion and they did some messed up stuff back in the day that's coming to haunt them now. And then the last one is The Other Black Girl by Zakia Delila Harris. And this is the publishing industry with sort of a get out twist. I watched an interview with um, Zakia and Riley Sager, which made me even more obsessed with it. So I'm really excited to read this one. And as I am, unfortunately, and I know I have nothing to complain about, getting ready to go back to the office for a short term in a couple weeks, I feel like why not get into an office mindset <laughs> by reading this? Next question is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year. So cheating slightly because I'm filming this on June 26th and on June 29th, Survive the Night by Riley Sager comes out. My pre-order is in. It's going to be personalized. I'm so excited about it. I can't wait for it to ship and arrive and I'm going to devour it. You guys know I am obsessed with Riley Sager. And then Samantha Downing's next book for your own good is coming out which i am super excited about that comes out in july and then alice feeney has a new book coming out i want to say like in september rock paper scissors um is that what it's called it's totally what it's called so alice feeney's rock paper scissors is coming out in a couple months too and i am like on the edge of my seat for that because i loved his and hers i love sometimes i lie so off the top of my head, those are the ones I'm so excited about. Next question is your biggest disappointment. And I have to say, it was The Wrong Family by Taryn Fisher. It was the first book I read this year. It was my first Taryn Fisher book. I had heard how like dark and twisted her books were, and it really just let me down. I didn't, I liked elements of it, but I didn't feel like it delivered. And parts of it felt a little bit predictable to me. And I just, I didn't love it. I didn't love it. Um, I did pick up Mudvayne. I haven't read it yet. So I've heard that her indie published books are a little bit better because she can take more risks and doesn't have to like tamper things down. So I haven't given up on Taryn Fisher, but unfortunately the wrong family didn't work for me. The next question is what book was your biggest surprise? And I have to say, no one is more surprised than me that I am obsessed with Lore by Alexandra Bracken. So I had heard a lot of people talking about this earlier in the year. And it is, it was kind of pitches like Hunger Games with Greek mythology. So this came out in January. And I started to read it on an ebook for my library. And I, I don't even know if I was like 20 pages in. And I was just like, I must have this book. I am completely obsessed. I devoured this book. I loved it so much. I cannot wait to read it again. But this is just everything I didn't know I wanted. And you get this complete Greek mythology blended in. And it's this story about how the Greek gods have become mortal. And kind of once every seven years, they can be hunted. And if they're killed, their powers go to the person who kills them. And it's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I cannot recommend it higher. I just obsessed, obsessed. So the next question is, who is your favorite new author? They can either be a debut author or a new to you. And I have a couple, because I can't just have one. And the first one is Jennifer McMahon. So I read The Drowning Kind in June and I loved it and I have the Night Sister on my shelf. I've heard great things about Jennifer McMahon and just haven't picked her up yet. And I just love the ghosty kind of horror darkness of her. I love her writing. I have listened to tons of podcasts and follow her on Instagram. And I also am super obsessed 
with her writing advice because I think it's amazing. So love her. And then the next one kind of in the same vein is Simone St. James. So I read Sundown Motel earlier this year. I picked up The Broken Girls, same thing, super duper ghosty, so well written. This is jam packed with like powerful, fabulous, fierce women, love it. And then the next one, which also kind of falls in the surprise category, but not as much as lore. But again, I was having the FOMO because everybody was talking about it. And it's House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. So I know that she has two previous books, which I maybe kind of totally picked up, which are not completely in the same vein as this, but I love her writing. And again, it's this darkness, mysterious. This is definitely a little shudder gets a little little gory, it gets a little grotesque, but I just absolutely loved her writing. Her writing is just, it's so visual and impactful. And again, just great, amazing women in this book. Obsessed. Next question is your newest fictional crush. I love me a crush in a book. I've got two. So my first one is Henry from The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. He's everything and then some. I just can't get enough of him. And then my second one is Caster from Lore. And oh, he's just so good. They're just such great characters. So like, who in a million years would have thought my crushes were from fantasies? <laughs> Not me, but I love these. I love them, love them. Next question is newest favorite character. There's a lot of people that I love but hands down, I'm giving it to Finley. I loved this book and I loved her. And I cannot wait for the sequel of this. Like here's a book <laughs> and like when the sequel comes out, I feel like I know what my answer is gonna be next year. But I just absolutely loved this book. I think she's just so great and she's funny and she's smart and she makes mistakes and she's like completely human. And she's just a badass lady getting it done, getting it done. And then you put Vero in it with her and they're like best friend goals. I talked about this before. It's like the dead to her, Christina Applegate, Linda Cardellini vibe completely. These women are amazing. Next question is a book that made you cry. <laughs> Maybe we do the book that didn't make me cry. I'm a, I'm a weeper. I, I get emotionally invested in books and I'm not sad about it. So after I do by Taylor Jenkins Reid, bald completely absolutely loved this book the invisible life of Addie larue cried multiple times totally loved this book malibu rising by taylor jenkins reed i think i have cried in every single taylor jenkins reed book loved it just it got me it totally got me tears were shed Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. Definitely shed a couple tears in this one. Just like in heartwarming ways sometimes or like feeling like happy for the characters kind of way. Not like it's all doom and gloom. Like I cry when, when I like cry happy tears too. It's not all, it's not all sadness. I for sure shed a couple tears in House of Hollow also. <laughs> Just loved it. Loved. And then if we want to get like super serious for half a second, Claim Your Power, which is a nonfiction by Mastin Kip. It's the 40 day journey to dissolve hidden trauma that's kept you stuck and finally thrive in your life's purpose. This will sort of rip you open. So this was, this was, this was a lot, but good, but a lot. Next question is a book that made you happy. So I'm going to double dip here. Finley Donovan is killing it. This book made me so happy. I like, I laughed. I loved it. I loved the mystery of it. Again, I loved Finley and Vero together, like just such a great book. And then oddly, this is probably a weird one to say it made me happy, but I finally read Pet Cemetery by Stephen King for Stephen King. And if you guys followed me back, I did a vlog about this and I talked about it. I saw Pet Cemetery, the original movie in high school at my friend's house and it terrified me. And I feel like I have exercised my pet cemetery demons. I wound up rewatching the movie after I read the book and it like makes me so happy. <laughs> I feel like I've come so far from like my 15 year old self who was so terrified of this and also has opened a whole gateway of, I'm gonna, I feel brave enough to read more Stephen King. So that makes me happy. So the next question is the most beautiful book that you got this year, whether it was gifted or you purchased it yourself. I'm gonna stick with only the books I've read because we would be here all day, but I have a few, of course. 
So you guys know, if you follow me, I bought the UK edition of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. So after I read Addie, I completely fell in love and I needed more of her in my life. So this is the first UK edition. There's another one coming out in October, but I'm going to have some self-control and not buy that one too. But it's got this beautiful cover here. There's beautiful on the inside. And then just even like the typeface and how the chapters and sections are laid out are different slightly than the US edition. So I just absolutely love this book. Inside and out, it is an absolutely stunning book. <sighs> Ditto for House of Hollow. The cover of this book is just absolutely amazing. And I had read or heard an interview with Christine Sutherland, Crystal Sutherland, that the cover designer is the same one who did Wilder Girls by Rory Power. I don't have the stomach, I think, to read Wilder Girls. I know there's a lot of bar body horror in that, but the cover is beautiful. And then, well, I, the cover of White Ivy is not necessarily something to write home about, but the inside is gorgeous. Just absolutely gorgeous. This was a really, really, really good book as well, but I just love the inside of this one. It's just amazing. I like so blown away by so much beautiful cover art. And then I also am a sucker for the painted edges. So this is the sanatorium. This is also the UK edition. And I just, I, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. It also is a cool cover, I think. It's very atmospheric in my book, but give me some painted edges all day long. And the last question is the inevitable, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And the answer is always the same. It's all the books, it's all the books. I have so many piles of books, as you guys know. There's so many books I wanna read. Those new releases that I talked about, Riley Sager and Alice Feeney and Samantha Downing are definitely gonna to be top on my list. I will say I've read a lot of new releases this year and I've been really good. Like a lot of people, I get myself in the trap of like buying a book and then just shelving it, but I've been really good about new releases that I got this year, reading them close to right away, which has been a good thing. And there's so many just, I just wanna read so many books. I wanna reread all my Riley Sagers. I just reread Final Girls, obsessed. I would love to reread Taylor Jenkins Reid. After I've read some of their books, I'm like, I wanna go back to the beginning and just start all over again, even though they're not series. I wanna read more Jennifer McMahon. <sighs> just so much, there's so many books I wanna devour. So, all the books. So that's gonna do it for the mid-year freak out tag. Like I said, hopefully this will kind of get me back onto the right path, get me tracking books a little bit better and makes me appreciate. Cause I was kind of like, did I read a lot of books this year? And yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing pretty good. So if you guys are interested in this, feel free to like answer some of the questions down below. If you make videos, make a video. Nobody tagged me. I'm just jumping in because you know, I can. <laughs> but. Thanks for hanging out today and spending some time with me and I hope you guys are doing great and I will see you guys in another video soon. Bye everybody.